suddenly and without warning. This is usually the way boating accidents and drownings happen. Each year, for instance, there are about 1,200 drowning victims. These weren't people who drowned while swimming. Most never intended going into the water. Either their boat capsized or they fell into the water. Surprisingly enough, almost half were known to have had life-saving devices available in their boat. Yet most were never used. Why? The answer is simple, time. Boating accidents happen so quickly, there just isn't enough time to react. Look what can happen on a sudden start. Or an unexpected turn. Or to an overloaded boat. These are some of the many emergency situations which make life-saving devices so important. Federal law requires every motorboat to have one Coast Guard approved life-saving device for each person on board. But just having them on board is not enough. It's somewhat like seat belts and the automobile. They're there, but unless you use them, they're of no help. Remember, whenever you're boating, use Coast Guard approved life-saving devices. This is a life preserver. It's one of several life-saving devices approved by the United States Coast Guard. Others include the buoyant vest, buoyant cushion, ring buoy, or special purpose device. Which one is best? Of course, the best are Coast Guard approved. But it's up to you to decide which of these is best for your particular needs. Here's how they work. The life preserver. Both the jacket type and the bib design are probably the most effective. They provide maximum protection, hold the wearer upright so that even the face of a non-swimmer or an unconscious person is above water. And will actually turn an unconscious person upright. The buoyant vest. It resembles the bib type preserver except that it has slightly less buoyancy. Yet many designs will also turn an unconscious person upright. And because it is less bulky than the preservers, it is favored by people who wish to retain more freedom of action. Special purpose devices. Water ski jump vests. Buoyant jackets and vests for hunters. And sailing vests. These devices can be used in other activities. There are many sizes, so be sure yours fits properly. Buoyant cushions, handy in an emergency, and they're easy to throw. However, because they must be clung to in the water, they don't give positive protection to children, non-swimmers, and injured persons. Cushions are not designed to be worn, but if you must, the best procedure is to put your arms through the straps and hug the cushion to your chest. Another procedure is to put opposite leg and arm into the straps. But remember, never wear the cushion on your back. This is what can happen. It'll turn your face under the water. And finally, ring buoys, perhaps the most familiar of all life-saving devices. An excellent device for throwing, but take care not to hit the person in the water. Life preservers, vests, or special purpose devices should be worn by children and non-swimmers at all times, especially in small open boats. For the others, the good swimmers, water conditions and other situations should dictate when and what type of device should be worn. For instance, if you're alone, you need maximum protection. But if you're in a fairly crowded area where others could provide help if necessary, Buoyant cushions may be adequate. In any emergency situation, or whenever there's the slightest doubt of safety, life-saving devices should be worn by everyone. Make sure there's an approved device carried and assigned to every person on board, that they know where it is and can get to it in a hurry if needed. And equally important, they should know how it's to be worn and how it will perform in the water. Remember, 
plan ahead. Expect the unexpected. For only in this way will you be ready should an emergency strike, as it usually does, suddenly and without warning.